you do unless you're running Arch Linux and you just no no I run a real distro. Through. Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. We're sit back, relax, take that mid week break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source and Vince Stone. Join this week. But you might know him if you play Track Mania with us on Tuesdays and Fridays, or if you're in our super secret Discord. That's Turbo, the tree sloth. Pretty packed up show, but the reason I wanted to get Turbo on was because we talked about his project a couple of weeks ago, and that's Control Plus Revise. And I thought, like, it's not often that we have a tamed software developer willing to come on the show. So let's take advantage of that. Find out how Mike got into Linux, uh, what caused this you're like hey anyway this needs to exist bring it out publish it public you know open source it and i want everybody to go play around with so stick around for that but first you've been up to anything fun you went um boating didn't you yeah yeah some friends of mine rented a boat with the was it a little thing tube you tie and pull behind it and it was a blast a tube that you like an inner tube yeah. Yeah, it was. was it, wait, hang on. Was a it a floaty? Pop? Like it's like a big floaty, and you could put like three, four people on the floaty, and you just go real fast and try to fling the people off. Was it, it was, a powered boat? Yeah, it was a powered boat. Okay. Was like a, See, I'm for whatever reason, I'm like imagining a lake or possibly a river. And I'm like, no, this it's a lake, and this is a pontoon, and it was good fun. I haven't been on a boat in like ten years. Do nice. you ever think about like, oh wow, when was the last time you went swimming? Uh, I, I'll, I'll jump in the water. I've been swimming this year. I okay. was swimming. I only go water. swimming like every three or four years, man. I think about it. I was like, I, I hope it's always like a bike. I never like jump in and go, Welp, wait, I gotta run. I'll be at the bottom. It, and I think, you know, I'm I'm fit. I'm good. And get out there and get a couple paddles in. I'm like, oof, I need, <laughs> I need to do this more. <sighs> That's something I've always wanted was like a swimming pool, but I, it's not the money to have the swimming pool. It's the enough money to have a swimming pool and pay somebody to do all the upkeep for it. Yeah. Yes. You can grow and stuff in there. All right. We're done playing around. Let's talk about llamas. Where'd you come up with this logo, man? Oh, <laughs> just uh, using an AI image generator. I was like, give me a llama in a library. And that, I, was, I was working out. I've got a better version of that one. I've been uh, messing with the AI image generator to get it to do like the hard lines, like you know, a very simple drawing. By the time I got the prompt just right, I was like, all right, I need to make a coloring book now. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Do it. I dare you. So, <laughs> controlplusrevise.com. Go check it out. It's a web zone. We were just there. Not much on it, but at least it'll get you to the Discord. It'll give you a download. Then it'll give you the Octocat so you can head over to the GitHub page. Now, before we talk about what this is and what it does, I want to get these basic questions because I'm always curious. Um, A lot of people just grew up using Windows. What got you curious about Linux? Like, when did you go? What are these nerds up to? Let me me go taste that. Let me sample that. Let me see see what a penguin tastes like. Pretty much like my first experience with, with computing. I was on a a game console and my god i'd go to the internet cafe to uh find out how to get my game console to do stuff it wasn't supposed to do and but after i unlocked it and modded it and was able to do stuff on it uh i was like i wanted to be a computer now we didn't have a computer around at the house that, that was i could use so i i came across i believe it was dine it was it was gentoo and dine bolik uh with the two Two choices that I had, and so I went and installed the Dyne Dyne Bolik on my original Xbox with 64 megabytes of RAM on that system. <laughs> but there was, you know, I had everything I wanted on there, and it, it was great. And uh, when I finally got around to building a computer, went with Linux because everything I needed was in one central spot with the package manager. And you know, this is before app stores and stuff, so. Felt more secure having everything from this official source, the you know the the repository from the package manager, and everything I wanted was there. Do you use Linux as an operating system, or are you still in the cult phase? I use it as an operating system now. I, I went through the phase of everyone I know has to be running Linux, and 
I, uh, Spread the word door to door. <laughs> like, excuse me, man. May I tell you about Linux? Yeah, yeah, that was me. That was yeah, me. I tried to get it on. Everybody goes through this. And like, once you've been doing it for like 30 years, it's like, you get to the, um, like, it's an operating system that I really like. But you still run Windows, right? I have Windows. I, I know the answer to this, but I'm trying I, to be the yeah, polite end of the interviewer. I, I have we Windows talk a lot. On, on my racing machine. So I have, I have a machine just for There we go. Racing. That's a good angle. Why? Why do you have to run that filth OS? Because there's not good drivers for my racing wheel. And there are, there's, you know, there's a guy who's got uh, a kernel driver for it. Yeah. But you have to install it yourself, not which a isn't a not, yeah, it's not a problem. The, the only thing is that uh, there's well, you're still going to be missing some Arch. of the features. Arch users tend to bounce off like compiling stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was on Gen 2 before Arch, so I'm, I'm right. quite fine okay. c- configuring and know, compiling. Man. Like I bring up, like, oh, you got to compile this from source. And like, Poof, smoke bomb. I'm like, where'd you guys go? <laughs> so you're there. You still play around with Windows. And all of this is relevant because you have released Control Plus Revise as a multi platform tool, correct? Correct, yeah. This llama, this llama gets around. No haiku OS yet. Yet. Yeah, that's not, I mean, if the Go compiler is there, it should compile. All right. Sales pitch. Straight from you, what does this thing do? I don't know if I did a good job explaining mm. to everybody what it's Control good. Plus Revise does. It's an easy-to-use local AI assistant. And so it's just running in the background on your computer. And you see some text on your screen, whether you're in a web browser or something else, and you just highlight it, press the keyboard shortcut, and based on what you have configured, it's either going to fix your grammar or create like a bulleted summary of what you're looking at. Most other tools, you have to open another window. You have to copy, and then you have to open another window, and then you have to paste it in, and, and you get your output. And, but with this one, it's just... It's in the background. It's paying attention to your keyboard shortcuts and interacting with your clipboard. So, like in the web browser, most of the time when you highlight something and you're trying to tell it to, you know, create you that bulleted list or or to summarize what you're looking at, it won't be able to write that out. So it'll put it in your clipboard, and you just open another window and hit paste, and it'll be there. What's it like to install on Linux? Because I know I um when we were doing Trackmania, I, I I said the F word, not that one. The other F word, flat pack. Oh yeah, flat pack. Um, <laughs> that one. I was working on the flat pack, um, but I do not have it published yet. It seems straightforward enough. I just need to submit my my flat pack definition flat file uh, to the flat hub and get them to pull it in. Oh, please uh, tell me you're busy. You're too just too busy working on the snap. The that the snap. I'm actually going to ignore the snap because. Uh, it's, I don't believe it's necessary for this program because okay. uh, the way that Go compiles the binary, everything you need lives in that single binary. So if you if you pull the project from GitHub, just the little AMD64 binary, it's going to run from whatever folder that you put it in. Does this work with X and Wayland? It does work with X and Wayland. And the reason I haven't pushed uh, to get my flat pack uh, image published is because mm-hmm. within Wayland, I've noticed some issues running from the flat, flat pack. So there's some configuration with flat pack I need to play with still. There, well, I mean, welcome to flat pack. Yeah. That was something I put in the uh, recent guide, uh, working on the, the NDI thing. And I'm like, well, you're using flat pack. You're used to doing 11 D extra steps. So here you go. This is interesting to me because the one thing that I've used generative AI, not outside of doing funny pictures, right? I've gotten that out of my system. We all did, right? Is basically what your tool does i'm like all right i got a block of text that i've written out and i want to translate it from technical documentation or at least get the right signals to guides to how i could into human speak yeah make it friendly and then i can take that and look at it i've never seen anything that was good enough to be like i'm going to copy and paste that because i have my own way of writing stuff but i'm like that's an interesting direction to take that. Oh, I didn't think about phrasing it like, oh, okay, I could take that and maybe reorder it. So I've been using Gemini for that, and it's okay. Is this something that I could do um, if I just like open up Gedit or whatever, or whatever, LibreOffice, whatever you're using to do your type, or Google 
docs or whatever the open source equivalent is. I'm sure somebody will remind me in the comments. The just take that and like I'm working on a script and writing it down, highlight it. Then what do I do? I, I right click. Do I hit the Control Alt Q butterfly? Actually, now we have customizable keyboard shortcuts, so it can be whatever keyboard shortcut you want. But the, the default would be Alt and C. And that's the, the Control Revise shortcut, and that'll do the user selected prompt. So which you know, if you want to fix the text, if if you if you want to tell it how to reformat the text, you want to you know you want to ask it to do this. So you're gonna hit Alt A, which is the default prompt. Uh, or the default keyboard shortcut for that action. You know, if you're in your you're in your text editor and you, you got that block of text and you don't like the things that I've selected as shortcuts, you could tell it, you know, do this to this text. Rebind the bookies. So I'll highlight the text, I do that, and it's gonna pop up. It's gonna give me a pop up saying, so, hey, I'm gonna take a crack at this. No, it'll just replace that text that's there. You highlight the text, you hit mm -hmm. the keyboard shortcut. Uh, it's going to pipe it into the AI, do all the magic bits, and then spit it back out into that text editor. So is there an option to give me an AB on the same page from where I copied it? Uh, there's an option to not have it write the text out and to also have it put the response in a window. So it'll open up a window oh, with the okay. response. I, I'm working on Because what the, we're going through, yeah. this is a very dangerous thing to do live because I'm going through my workflow. Yeah. is um by default it replaces okay let's we're both familiar with google docs right mm -hmm. say so i highlight that yes and so the default action is to run it through and it's just going to replace that yeah the de the default action will be correct the grammar in that in that sentence mm. Okay, so it's just going to do grip. Does it have the option to, like, because one thing I like to do with uh, Gemini is, like, grammar I'm usually close enough on, but I, I do a grammar pass, is I'll, I'll just say rewrite in an informal tone or something like that. Yeah, um, so there's uh, different prompts that I've pre configured. Okay. And, you know, one of them's correct grammar, another one's make it friendly. It'll make it more friendly. I think the one you're thinking of is make it more professional. No, it's less professional. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I, I this think, is what I use Gemini as like make informal. Like Okay, okay. I quit think talking we need that. like a technical documentation, you know? We're gonna have to add that shortcut. That that's not one of the uh the predefined actions. But but like I was saying, if you know you want to do something that's not predefined, you just press a different keyboard shortcut. But you have to tell it right about the text what you want it to do. GitHub.com <laughs> forward slash Baylet? Yeah, Baylet. Baylet. B A H H. Baylet. Baylet from uh, the Berserk manga. All right. Yeah, we're going to. There'll be a link to this in the show notes. How do we get it installed? I'm on Debian 12, so I'm going to take a look. Let me see what I do. I'm going to go to releases. There you go. Yeah. And I'm going to scroll down and. Uh, you missed all the text. Just, just, just what text? Up, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm downloading a program, bro. <laughs> I know better. I don't need. I don't need the developer telling me what I missed. <laughs> um, this bug they, report's going to go un, see, un what, what, unacknowledged. <laughs> what I'm giving you is a very unintentional real world example of how that goes. Here we go. God, you got to read the manual. You know what? I will come back to this text once I do this, and I try to run it, and it don't work. I mean, you could go with the tar, to, you know, or you could go with the this the Linux binary there. Just the Linux binary is that like uh, just all in one? I just uh, ch mod that plus x, and we're good to go. Yep, that's it. Is there anything else I need to install? There is. This is dependent on Olama. Olama. Oh. Olama is the program that runs in the background, managing the, these AI models that we're communicating to. All right. And, yes. So where do I get that from here? It's on the main README page. There's a link. Oh, all right. And this is one of the things I'm considering with the the flat pack is do I want to package in Olama with this program or or not? Uh, because you know, depending on your you know if you have an AMD GPU or a 
NVIDIA GPU, you're going to need a different version to be able to get the GPU acceleration out of these uh, AI agents. I am reading through this, and where I'm at right now is uh, I need Olama. Yeah, it should be I... just up a little bit. Yeah, there's a link. Olama. All right. So I got to go there and read how to install it? You do, unless you're running Arch Linux and you just no, no, I run a real distro. Your package manager. Uh, I run a real distro, dude. Come on, come on, get out of here. You're probably not running Docker either. If you're running Docker, uh, we'd be able to. If I wanted to run something in a Docker. container, man, yeah, I'd run Arch. <laughs> um, what's it take to set this up? Like, this is I'm curious about. Uh, just download, install. Yeah, at uh, Obama's great. That's uh, pretty simple to get up and going. There it is, right there. That's what you want to do. You just want to run that right from your terminal. Don't investigate the script or anything. Just you know, So what you're saying is you have the option to pack all this, the other 11-day bonus steps into one package? I don't want to tell people to do that. <laughs> to run no, this no, no. command. <laughs> no, this is what I'm saying, dude. Like, I, I'm saying like if I could just download the thing and it would work. Yeah, that that'd be the flat. But again, you know, depending, you know, if if you're installing the flat, but why really want to install up? Because if I pick the wrong version of Olama mm -hmm. to uh, to bundle with it, and you know, I say I go with the Nvidia one because it's the most common card. A lot of people with AMD cards aren't going to get the GPU acceleration. Okay, but can't you bundle them all? I guess I could. I guess I could bundle them all, but then I would have to have the f you know this flat pack launch into a script. That would detect whether you're on this or that, and then launch the appropriate Alama. I, mean, I, I could do that from the from the Go code too, but yeah, it's a few extra steps. It's going to make the binary a little bigger too, though. Well, it's a flat pack. People are used to like, oh, I want to install Notepad. Oh, it's 16 gigs. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people yeah. are size sensitive when it comes to flat packs, or they have to pretend not to be. I'll have to take this into consideration, especially with the Windows installer. They don't care. They just, you know, just, just make it work. Is yeah, Olama that's... shipped with any Linux distros? Uh, not that I know of. And like I said, the only package manager that I know that it's in is in the Arch, Arch package manager. Is there a flat pack version of it? There's not a flat pack version of it. Oh. Hmm. But I did do some looking, and there's some other. Uh, flat packs that are AI tools. They all have, use JavaScript and you know, they're not native applications. For shame. And that's like <laughs> one of the big sells about uh, Control Plus revises. This is all done locally. Now, what if I don't have a GPU? It'll run on the CPU, but you're not going to have as good of a as I say, a CPU. It's going to run on the CPU. You're just not going to have as good a time. What it's if I have take... one of the new ones with AI built into it? I don't have one of those, so I'm not sure. Um, depends on, you know, Olama's doing a lot of this heavy lifting, so uh, as soon as it can start processing on those AI coprocessors, co -processors, then uh, the, we'll be able to take advantage of that. How did yeah. you get attracted to the um, generative uh, text images? And all? Why, why did that fascinate you? What really triggered it for me was watching the WWDC, the, the Apple Developer Conference, and they were showing right. off all the new AI features, and I was so excited. I was, oh, yeah, this is all coming to the phone. Like, I've been playing with this stuff locally on my machine for, like, a year or two, and, but then when, towards the end of that presentation, now they're like, oh, well, if your question's a little too complex, we're going to just ship this off to ChatGPT. Mm. I was like, no, 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 come on, please don't, no, no. And so I thought, well, Linux needs to not be left behind uh, linux can do this i just need to add the functionality because the tools are there llama is the thing that's doing most of the heavy lifting and control plus revise is just interfacing into that it's giving you a simple way to access these ais and bringing it to linux and windows and and mac before mac has fully released it yet and like that's something we want to point out like um control plus revise is all done locally there's one that, exception, though, right? It, there is one exception. If you want to have the text read back to you, mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're piping that text to, to Google servers because they have the best text-to-speech service. And 
Yeah, it's a high Google <laughs> servers. We're using that API to do the closed captioning live. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But there are a couple uh, local possibilities that I've explored that uh, when I when I get some more time, I want to add a couple more features. And before I get to, you know, adding the local text, uh, there was it the eSpeak, which is already on most Linux distros. Uh, and then a, a local AI tool. And, you know, that's, it's going to be a little bit of effort to get it tied in, but I think it's, uh, it's promising. So we will have the local AI text to speech supported uh, eventually. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. All right. There we go. That's everything you needed to know about getting your text swapped out. Go play with it. Go find all the bugs. If you find the Easter egg, let me know in the comments. There's, there's an Easter egg in it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to have to add one now. I, I got that. I had that beat out of me so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brand new project. Back. I do what I want. Yeah, see if you can find the hidden Konami code. Man, internet used to be fun. Websites used to do weird stuff when you punched in the Konami code. Those days are gone, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to thank Turbo Tree Sloth, if you know him. From our track mania on Tuesdays and Fridays, you're able to hop in if you're a patron or a one of our beautiful Twitch subs links that up to our Discord track manias, and we go at it. We have a good time. It's an old game. Enjoy. He's pretty good. He plays with a racing wheel, and sometimes he cuts on his foot cam. We can watch his little feet go up and down when he's racing. Where can people find you? Uh, I will have a link to the project, of course, the web zone and uh, GitHub in the show notes. So those would be below the video description. Uh, where else can we? Go creep on you, East Talking. Oh, uh, let's see. I got on the the GitHub. I got a link to a Discord about the Control Plus Revise. Right. I don't know if you want to follow me. You want to follow Control Plus Revise? Just join the Discord. Just join the Discord. Memory yeah. hole all of the documentation and questions in Discord. Do it. No, no. I'm, Be the I change. got the I got the website up, and I'm. Uh, it's it's mainly meant for documentation. It's uh, do you have, have discussions a, enabled on your GitHub? GitHub. I don't. I don't know. I'll uh, take a look. It's like a forum. Yeah. Yeah. We'll turn. We'll turn that on. That's always good. All right. Just trying to get this project up and going, and and I hope it's useful for people. And thanks for helping me get the word out. Oh, I want people to get play with it. Um, I, I was inspired to do this when uh, you, you and Strider were fighting back and forth <laughs> in uh, our Discord about like trying to get it up and working, and like you need people to go test it and play around with it. And I'm sure there are definitely um, privacy concerned people that would like this functionality, but they don't want stuff bounced over the internet. You know, like I get it, man. Like I block AI scrapers when and where I can. You know, I, yeah, I know you're talking. You can't block them all. I know, I know. You got to try, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to wrap it up. Wrap us up for this evening. Thanks for joining in. We do this live um, 3 p.m. on Wednesdays. Come check it out if you like the uh, cut of our gym. You can go over to Linux Gamecast. We get a bunch of stuff over there. We got the podcast. If you want to download that, hey, you don't want to go through like getting tracked and Spotify and all that, just download it right from Old Man Vin. I got you covered. Got a support tab. You know the podcaster spiel. We got a Patreon. That's how finance is. We'd appreciate your support. You got an extra buck a week to kick our way. We'll put it to good use. Guaranteed. We also got LibrePay, PayPal. Uh, Magic Internet Money, Amazon Wishlist. We got a store. We got the Amazon storefront and Humble Affiliates. If you can join us on Patreon, you get this. You get the lo- live and uncut version of the show, which is like the extra long version because, you know, we get this chopped down. This is going to be like a 30-minute episode. It's going to be like an hour and a half for the live stream. Make sure you get a copy of that. Access to the Discord where we don't do tech support, but we do talk about everything else. Track Mania, which we do on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. We got our own little private server. I think we're about done bringing that up for this episode. And your name in the credits. See, Turbo, you're going to see one that says uh, Turbo Tree Sloth right about now. Ah, time for some credits. There it is. There it is. I had to rework the credits. There we go. Let's see if everybody's angry at him. One, two, three, four, five. Ian, Ishii, Kayar Taki. <laughs> right. Yeah, Turbo, Egg Roll, Basil. Uh, Dementor. Mr. Joe, Dirty Chin. <laughs> Death Notes, Martin, Ten. Zeno. Ten. Yeah. Rock, Joanna, Steven. So you just started right in the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 
Thanks for showing up. Hopefully we answered some questions or at least get you interested in this type of stuff. Like I'm fascinated with AI. I want to know about our new overlords. Like I, I want I want to keep up to date. So it's always good to have a little AI avatar, somebody messing around with it. Yeah, this Control Plus Revised, there's multiple AI agents to choose from, whether it's Google Gemma or the Llama from from uh, from Meta, which is great and it's the default. But these models, for the most part, mm -hmm. have the entirety of human knowledge in them. You could you could ask them, how do I make cornbread? How do I you know do X? And they're gonna spit it out to you. And they're gonna be like, uh, you know what? Uh, we found that like cornbread that is too violent of a question, so we're not gonna be able to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> coleslaw, okay. Yeah, all right, fine. Coleslaw. coleslaw I can do. Bye, everybody.